Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today, um, I'm going to go over a use case that was presented at the most recent Domo uh, community gathering, um, where people were presenting about doing um, or optimizing delivery planning. My goodness, if I could only read. The general gist of the use case is they had warehouses, they had customers that they needed to deliver to. And the question was, is what is the most efficient warehouse to deliver from? Now, the challenge is, is that historically this organization was um, batching or grouping up orders based off of the city or the state where the order was placed from. And they kind of assumed that the nearest warehouse would be in the same state. But he had eyes on this. Consider the West Coast, West Coast. Um, if I had a warehouse in Oregon, let's say in Grants Pass, and I wish I could spell warehouse, but this was done in a hurry. Let's say I had a warehouse in Grants Pass, which is really close to the California border. And then my California warehouse is in Shasta, or which is a little bit south, or let's say even further south in like say San Diego, which is right on the Mexico border. If I had a delivery to Crescent City, which is just south of the Oregon-California border, I might end up driving 288 miles from Shasta to deliver to Crescent City because Crescent City and Shasta are in the same state. Meanwhile, Grants Pass is only 88 miles away, like a third of the distance, but because it's listed as in a different state, the grouping um, says, you know, the most efficient place to uh, deliver from is Shasta. That's the problem um, the presenter went out to solve. What they did was actually really clever. They jumped into Redshift, which has the ability to work with geometric objects. And they converted the address of the warehouse and the address of the customer into latitude and longitude points. And then they used trigonometry and black magic to calculate the mathematical distance between these two points. Something about the radius of the Earth, the arc, the cosine, and the tangent. I'm not a mathematician. The problem, though, is that, right, yes, I can calculate the distance as the crow flies, but that straight line distance is not always representative of the driving distance. Consider if I had a desert or uh, a city in the middle of my route or maybe a mountain that needs to go over a mountain pass. Okay. So my goal, my spin on this was to say, hey, could I take an address, geocode it, um, using some sort of an API tool and calculate the driving distance. That's what I set out to accomplish. For me, I'm using the Waze root calculator library, which you give it an address and it just gives you the distance and the driving time. Super easy. You could use Google Maps, you could use Google Earth, you could use Bing, TomTom, uh, Tom, Garmin, whatever. Whatever API will do this for you, but again, the point was to get driving distance. All right, so what's my setup? For this uh, sample data set, I basically have a list of addresses, fake addresses that I pulled off of the internet. I assigned half of them, or actually nine of them, as a distribution center. And the rest of them are all, you know, these are gonna be my customers. Cool. Once that data is uploaded into Domo, I pulled it into Jupyter Notebook using the Domo Jupyter library. There is a KB article on using Domo Jupyter, um, but the method that I'm using here is the read data frame method. What I like about it is it allows me to send simple SQL and that will extract the data from the adrenaline database layer in Domo, pull it into my Jupyter um, environment where I can then you know, turn it into a pandas data frame and do stuff. So I have two data frames, my distribution centers and my customer addresses. Just the address. All right. So in order to find the closest distribution center, does it make sense I need to test the distance of all of my distribution centers? If we were smart, we might try to do some sort of batching and be like, well, you know, it's in the Western Hemisphere. It's a different continent, right? Um, there could be some sort of batching stuff, but I'm just going to do a cross apply. 
I'm literally going to test each address and distribution center co uh, combination to see which one is the closest. To do a cross apply in pandas, I'm using the merge operation. You could make the argument, Jay, you could do this as a data set view before you pulled it into um, Jupyter. Both of these options are actually really good. Um, let's just run with what we've got. So now I have a data set that has one row per customer address and all of the distribution centers. Now all I have to do is apply the ways root calculation over each row of my data frame. Now this is all super Googleable. It was almost entirely copy paste out of the startup guide for ways root calculator. You pass in two addresses. You pass in the region that the addresses are in. In this case, they are in the US. And it will return a tuple that gives you the um, root time in minutes and the root distance in kilometers. I added some exception handling. And by added some, I mean I just print the error. But like, what could be some valid exceptions? Well, the address could be a fake address, which they literally are, so some of them don't resolve. Or maybe for whatever reason, I have a dropout from the Waze API. Maybe I hit my rate limit, whatever the reason. Um, so I, I could extend this exception handling here. Maybe if I can't resolve it in Waze, go hit up Google. Who knows? Nice and simple, though. My output gives me the root time in minutes and the root distance in kilometers. And the most important thing, write that puppy back to Domo as quickly as I can. I'm choosing to avoid doing any major ETL here in Python because for myself, my ETL skills and magic are going to be stronger. Also, I want this data set to be useful for everybody on my team. So if I can just output the results of data science as fast as I can, then maybe they can take this data set that I've generated and use it however they want to. So I want to minimize how much ETL I'm choosing to do in Jupyter Workspaces. I appreciate for those of you who are Python nerds, you're going to do all of your ETL in Python. Do what makes sense for you guys. All right. My output data set, let's take a quick look at it. Super simple. One row per customer for each of the nine um, distribution centers, root time in minutes, root time in kilometers. Only thing I'm missing now is like which one is the best one. How do I define best in this context? Well, I'm going to define best in a data flow. Truly. No rocket science here. The best is just going to be the shortest distance. Now, in my case, I lied. It's not going to be the shortest distance. It's going to be the shortest driving time, because driving through the middle of LA on a Saturday is going to be a very different experience than driving on, I don't know, Monday morning. So time, the driving distance in minutes, I think, is more important than the time. Um, we will partition our data set by the addresses, right? Because I want to reset the counter for each address. And then I just output the results. Some of you might be tempted to put a filter here and just like filter and give me the best address. I'm not going to pre-filter my data. You know me, that's not how I write ETLs. I like to give you all of the data so that you can design what you want when you create your cards or your final output. So now I've got ranking applied for this address the best is, or the closest address is in Bellingham. The second closest is in Avon, Massachusetts. Uh, the furthest away is Panama City, Florida. Yeah, that makes sense if the second closest is Louisville, Kentucky. Right. So why do I return multiple rows instead of one? Remember, I don't like to pre-filter my data. But also, what if, for whatever reason, I'm out of stock in location one? Maybe I'm out of stock in location two. And I'm out of stock. The closest 
chair is in Annapolis, Maryland. Depending on the lead time, maybe it makes the most sense to wait for that stock to show up in Bellingham. Alternatively, maybe the lead time is five weeks. Maybe it just makes sense to suck it up and drive that chair 375 minutes. I don't know the answer, right? That's a business use case. That's a business thing. That's logic that we want to build into this optimization process. But by providing all of the data, I give my users more options as they're adding more and more business logic to this process. Cool. At the end of the day, um, wherever my data science notebook is, our goal was to add an extra layer on top of this optimizing deliver, delivery planning use case. Calculating the geometric point to point distance using Redshift was a stroke of brilliance. It's actually not documented that you can do that in Domo, so kudos to that team for, for putting that together. I wanted to take advantage of the fact that Jupyter workspaces can touch the internet and therefore hit up um, driving distance APIs, which is something that's unique to Jupyter Notebooks of all of the ETL tools that exist in Domo. So if you're wondering, hey, Jay, when should I use Jupyter Notebooks? When you have to hit the internet. Um, this example was very basic. I did the least amount of ETL that I could here in Jupyter because I want to do all of that logic and magic where other people can in get involved, where other people can play with it. Calculating distance, that's the API thing. That's something that you know I'm obviously not going to touch or play with. But up the application of business logic, all of that can happen in magic. Hope you guys found this tutorial useful, and I'll catch you later.